Okay, it's now 2.30. We'll go ahead and get the webinar started. I uh, want to welcome everyone. I'm Mike Coyazzo, Product Manager for Commercial and Life Safety Dampers. We want to thank you for joining us today for our Wednesday webinar. As you'll notice on the screen, the other upcoming webinars for the year are shown, and we'll send a notification reminder prior to the date, so you can put that on your calendar, and we hope you'll be able to join us for those sessions as well. Today I'll be discussing UL design number I-503. We'll explore what it is, why it may be useful for your application, and what types of rust and fire dampers can be applied. As many of you know, when inspecting code authorities have a lot to look at on the job, and uh, life safety uh, dampers tend to make them a little more cautious when they give approval. So we just try to make sure everybody's up to date on this new design and how you might incorporate it into a particular application. So the I-503 is geared mainly for construction at the bottom or the top of a rated shaft uh, opening in lieu of other methods of construction that may not always be acceptable to the authority having jurisdiction. Uh, Ruskin gets involved with a lot of job situations, so we do see these things come up from time to time. The design itself can be found on UL's website, which is uh, simply ul.com, and it's under the online certifications directory. And we have the I-503 installation supplement on our, on our website at ruskin.com, and that's shown on the right side of the, the slide there. So first, I just want to briefly talk about the background of horizontal uh, mounted fire dampers, right? So the UL555 listed uh, dampers um, that we're familiar with, they're actually tested in concrete masonry construction when they're applied in a horizontal orientation, and, which is why all damper companies note this in the installation instructions. Oftentimes, we get a call about other horizontal construction, you know, which isn't concrete, and then from there, we tend to get into this conversation. Uh, we, a lot of times we have contractors trying to install the UL dampers at the bottom of shaft openings and they're trying to either use the shaft wall construction or some other fire stop uh, system. However, the inspecting code officials may not either accept the application if it deviates from the damper installation criteria that we show or if there's no supporting documentation. In other words, it's likely to hold up a job or, or call some, uh, some delay of some sort. Uh, we've seen this happen numerous times. So what we want to do is look at the current practices when you're dealing with penetrations through a rated shaft enclosure, and then we'll look at how the I-503 can, can be incorporated. So protecting the bottom of a shaft enclosure when it does not extend to the bottom of the building or structure, it can be a challenge depending on which method you prefer or which is most practical to accommodate. So the International Building Code, it basically allows for three ways that a shaft can be en enclosed when it does not extend to the bottom of the building. The first method, which is shown on the far left, shows the shaft terminating at the lowest floor level with construction of the same fire resistance rating as the lowest floor through which the shaft passes, but it can't be less than the shaft rating itself. In the middle, you'll see there's an illustration that shows a shaft termination in a, in a room that's basically related to the, the purpose of the, the shaft, so it's usually going to be a mechanical room. And then the third method shown on the right shows a traditional UL555 fire damper that's protecting the bottom of the shaft opening. Uh, keep in mind the bottom of the shaft in this case would usually be a, a concrete masonry type construction. So that would be a sort of a by the book, just a normal installation that would follow our current installation uh, uh, instructions. So we're going to come back to option three in just a minute. But there is another alternate method that you may be familiar with. It's not necessarily described or mentioned in the code. However, it's commonly accepted because it's not prohibited by any language in the code either. The type of construction often gets referred to as a hat box. So basically what's happening is we're building a more substantial enclosure down below below the floor level. And as you can see in the illustration, uh, you're basically routing the duck out of the wall of that enclosure. So now the uh, authorities you know, having jurisdiction have a way to understand the damper in a vertical orientation. And so in this application, the damper would be treated as a wall-mounted fire damper or combination fire smoke. And so all the criteria for a normal vertical-mounted damper would apply. And this bring, brings us to I-503 design. So as you can see in the illustration there, um, 
then you can also look this up on, on the UL directory. The I-503 is considered a, a non-load-bearing, two-hour fire-protective membrane. So it's not a floor ceiling assembly. It's just a protective membrane or barrier that consists of perimeter channels. You have steel joist and two layers of 5-8 uh, gypsum on the top and the bottom of the joist. And the framed opening where the damper would be located is also to be lined with a single layer of 5 8 gyp. The design requires the perimeter channels to be attached to the fire-resistive rated structure, uh, whatever that structure is. Could be a concrete floor, could be a, a, a different type of floor or ceiling assembly. And then your damper size can be up to 48 inch uh, square maximum. That's the uh, largest size allowed. So I'm coming back to option uh, three. Um, this is where the fire damper is shown protecting the bottom of the uh, floor uh, in the shaft. So this is where the I-503 design could be constructed, you know, assuming you don't have a concrete floor open there for the damper or duct. So this is where you could build this system and essentially it would be more accepted by the authority having jurisdiction because it's obviously a documented, evaluated uh, assembly. And it's, it's typically going to be more cost effective than other alternative methods of construction that, of course, may not even be accepted. So, again, you got cost, you know, issues involved as well as uh, simply just being accepted by whomever the uh, code official that's looking at the, uh, the uh, installation. So what UL listed fire dampers are allowed in the I-503 design? Most any of our hour and a half static or dynamic fire dampers or combination fire smoke dampers that are listed for horizontal mounting can all be applied. So that's going to be quite a, quite a few there. Uh, since the code allows for hour and a half rated dampers to be applied in barriers rated less than three hours, uh, you're able to apply the hour and a half here because obviously I-503 is rated for two hours. Uh, the damper will follow the same installation criteria as a horizontal mounted fire damper, as I mentioned. So the installation sheet that ships with the product now is what the contractor would follow. They can also use our single fast retaining angle, uh, which is allowed on the top side of the barrier. So it's going to save labor time for the contractor. And if they choose to use a second retain, retaining angle on the underside of the floor, uh, that would simply be optional. But the fast single angle on the top is obviously the preferred and fastest method for installation. So as you can see, the I-503 offers flexibility for the design engineer, the contractor, and actually the code official, because now there's a documented system that they can actually look at, and there's criteria for that. Uh, so if you do have a current project, or maybe there's a future project, you want to keep this in mind. Uh, we've already seen projects around the country that have utilized this just because it, you know, it's now available. So this has only been out for about uh, about a year or so. Um, so this is actually a short uh, webinar here for the I-503. We just want to update you and make sure you're familiar with it. Uh, again, on our website, we have the I-503 supplement. You can look at UL's website at the actual design. You can kind of read through there. Now I'm going to remain on, on air for a while just to take any questions. Uh, I see we have a few questions that already came in, so I'll go ahead and, and get to those. Uh, you should have a control panel there on your screen, and there's a raised hand icon. That's how you ask a question. So you can type something in, and I'll see it on my end, and we can answer any questions. So with that, I will go ahead and read this first question to you. So the question is, is the I-503 considered a floor ceiling assembly? Um, this question may have came in before I mentioned that, but... No, this is not a floor ceiling assembly. Uh, it's just considered a fire protective membrane. So it's not like a, a any any sort of you know roof floor ceiling assembly that you're used to. This is strictly a, a barrier or membrane. So think of a wall that's turned on its side. That's essentially what we have here. We have another question that says, uh, "Do code officials know about this design?" Not necessarily. UL designs aren't always known by uh, any code official. Uh, they're not always looking through the directory, or there's no notification system. So let, let's say that uh, where you know where they would have indication of what's come out or what's new. Uh, we obviously do train code officials, so we would bring this up uh, as we would in any sort of training uh, situation. Uh, but obviously, it's available on our website, and you can easily look it up on UL's directory. So easy access to to look at it or or have documentation. 
We have another question. Uh, the question is, what is, why is my shaft wall construction not able to be used at the bottom of the shaft enclosure like the I-503? That's simply because most shaft wall construction can't pass a horizontal fire test. So if you can't pass a horizontal fire test, that, that barrier, if it's built down on a horizontal plane, it's not going to be suitable or adequate to, uh, to hold up in a fire. So. I-503, if you compare it to any normal shaft wall design, it's, you know, they're quite different. Okay, I see some other questions here, so let me, let me get to those. And we have a question that says, can the floor or ceiling be made of wood? Uh, I think that goes back to the point we made earlier about the, uh, the perimeter channels attaching to the rated structure. So as long as your, your structure, your horizontal, uh, let's call it a floor ceiling assembly, right? So your shaft comes down, it intersects your floor, whatever that floor is. Uh, as long as it's a fire resistive rated structure, then that, that is suitable for the I-503 to be applied. So we could have a uh, you know concrete deck with steel joists. We could have a wood floor you know truss system. So any floor system that, that's recognized uh, as a fire resistive rating, you know that rating could vary from one hour to up to three hours or, or more. So yeah, the iPhone with three would be uh, adequate for any of those rated floor systems. We will have this uh, webinar posted on YouTube as well. So if you have uh, anyone that uh, was unable to join us, we can certainly make that available to them through, uh, through YouTube. And we'll have this posted uh, for you on our website as well so you can have access to it. I had a question, uh, where is the I-503 supplement located on, online? I think that's what the question is. Uh, if you go to our Ruskin.com, if you do a search on any of our fire damper models or combination fire smokes, it's going to be down in the document category that will say installation supplements. Again, we want to thank you all for joining us today. I uh, hope this was uh, good information for you. If you didn't already know about it, uh, feel free and uh, send in any uh, questions that you have uh, beyond the webinar if you need to. We'll be happy to answer that for you.